see once before, that way. We are closing the getaway truck. Crunch! Faster! Faster! A narrow road cannot overtake. S241, S241. We have lost contact with truck RPC-134. Over there. What's the matter with her tonight? Nothing. What can I get you? What's the special about him? He's her fiance, that's all. He also happens to be Mrs. Railton's son. Her son? I didn't know she had one. Uh, some mothers do have him, you know. How come I've never seen him around? Because he hasn't been around. He's in America. He's a doctor. Now, what can I get you? Another scotch. You know, Beth, I don't think I shall buy that little cottage in Hampshire after all. It needs too much done to it. Everything that ought to be inside is outside. A bit late, aren't they? They'll be all right. Maybe they've missed the bus. Maybe you talk too much. You know she didn't want them to go. So? So, I hope she isn't right, that's all. something like this would happen. Well, what else could I do? The alarm going and all. You sure you got picked up? Sure as death. I know Marco. He'll talk. He knows better than that. I've done the truck and taken care of everything. I'll say you have. Well, we can't prove anything. When are you going to stop thinking the police are a bunch of fools? You think they won't be around here asking questions? How dumb can you get? Well, I've fixed an alibi. I hope it sticks. Hadn't we better tell her? How about you pouring me another scotch? back. Everything all right? No, everything all wrong. What do you mean? They ran into the police. Marco's been arrested. Oh, no. Who's there, Beth? You're talking to somebody? Using him. Who's in here? 
Ah, oh, Marguerite. Did the others get clear? Yes. Are they outside now? Rogers is with Clem. Rudd had better go home and lie low. And I want to talk to Clem in here now. You hate all this, don't you, Beth? I know. I know. Beth, you're a good kid. Get out now. I can't. She needs me. Okay, it's your life. Uh-oh, here they come. Busy little bees, always on the job. Now, don't forget, Beth, you don't know a thing. Don't worry about looking dumb. They've done themselves, they'll never notice. Well, aren't you going to say something? Jeff. Oh, this is ridiculous, darling. You're even prettier now than you were when I went away. Old age seems to agree with you. Hi, Margie. You're still here, huh? I wouldn't recognize this place without you. <laughs> I'm part of the furniture and fittings. But what brings you over here, surprising us all? Well, I thought it might be a good idea if I hopped over and saw that you weren't leading my fiancé astray. John, why didn't you let us know? Well, I only knew myself a few days ago. Dr. Van Cleef had to come over on a consultation, and he offered me the trip. He's a great guy. Beth, how's mother? She's fine, John. I'll bet you'll be surprised. Well, darling, aren't you pleased? Well, of course I am, but... Well, if we knew you were coming, we you could... You don't have to roll out the red carpet for me. You're the one I came to see. Oh, Margie, give me some cash, will you? I've got a taxi waiting, and I don't have any English money. You stay right here. I'll be right back. What are we going to do? Never let her know, I suppose. I'll go. Morning. Good morning, Inspector. Will you have a drink? No, thank you. I just want some information. Oh, well, perhaps you'd better talk to Mrs. Reff. Ooh, oh, Inspector Harris. How nice of you to come and see me. I don't think you've ever met my son. He just come home and surprised us all. John, this is Inspector Harris, a very old friend of mine. How do you do? How do you do? On holiday, Mr. Elton? Yes, sort of. I should think your mother's glad. Wonderful woman. I think so, too. Well, Inspector, I don't suppose you came here just to pass the time of day. What can I do for you? Ask her if she can tell me anything about a man called Marco. Mr. Marco? I'm afraid I can't help you, Inspector. He is a member of the club. I don't believe he's been in for some time. I don't know much about him. Marguerite, have you seen Mr. Marco lately? I think he came in one day last week, but I haven't seen him since. I'm sorry, Inspector. We could let you have his address if you wanted. We know his address, thank you. Now, he has a friend who comes here, a man named Harvey. Was he here last night? Raj Harvey? No, no, I don't remember seeing him. What have they been up to, Inspector? Did Marco or Raj Harvey ever come here with a tall, dark Scotsman? Man with a bit of a stammer. Stammer? Oh, no, no. No, I can't remember anyone like that. No, I'm sure. Well, Inspector, you make my mother's club sound like some sort of a thieves' kitchen. <laughs> A crook's best defense is to be seen in the company of respectable people, you know. Well, I'll go up and have a wash and leave you to it. I like you very much, but I'm not too sure about the company you seem to keep. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry we couldn't help you, Inspector. Shall we let you know if Mr. Marco comes in? He won't be coming in for the next few months, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. Like that, is it? Silly man. Will you have a drink before you go, Inspector? No, thank you. Tell us she's very kind, but we've got a lot of work to do. Next time, perhaps. Make it soon, then, or I shall think you've forgotten me. 
No fear of that, Mrs. Relton. Morning. Oh, you never thought that move out by yourself, Beth. Who's helping you? Who's in here? Oh, Clem, what is it? Any news of Marco? Has he talked? He won't talk. Did you get rid of the stuff? That's what I want to know. You're always in too much of a hurry, Clem. I'm not putting that stuff out until I'm sure about Marco. What about the payout? She's got to move that stuff. I can't buy loyalty with promises. Can't buy loyalty anyway, Clem. And they're your boys, remember. Nothing to do with me. Tell her we're all in this together, win or lose. Now, what about the stuff? What am I going to tell the boys? Tell them they're all in it together, win or lose. They'll all get their money, but when it's safe and not before. And if they don't like it, you can tell them it was your fault. My fault? I wasn't even there. You arranged the job, didn't you? And you made a mess of it. I told you it was risky. Anyhow, what's done is done. You'll just have to lay off until all this dies down. Lay off? When I'm onto the biggest thing that ever came our way. Oh, we don't do anything for the next few weeks. But this job won't wait that long. This is real money. Now, look, tell her. There's a packet of uncut diamonds being shipped from Amsterdam on Tuesday night. They're being shipped to Considine's place near Bond Street. And they're insured for a quarter of a million. Now, look, tell her I want a meeting here Friday night. Everybody concerned. By that time, I'll have a plan all set out. I tell her it'll be the last time. Don't be a fool, Clem. Leave it alone. It's right outside your class. What, does she think I'm going to let a thing like this slip through my fingers? Then why not leave her out of it altogether? I can't. I can't move that stuff. She can. She's got the contacts. Now, listen, Beth. This is going to mean thousands to us. Maybe 150,000. One night's work. Then we're all sitting pretty. You too. Me? Then we won't have to do this kind of job anymore. She'll be able to pay up all the debt she got herself into through setting this place up. You'd like that, wouldn't you? No, Clem. You heard her. She knows best. Quarter of a million. <sighs> Quarter of a million. Here, I'll take the loan. Thanks. Well, did you get the money? No, not yet. Still hot. I'll lock it up. <laughs> money always does burn a hole in your pocket, doesn't it, Raj? Oh, ah, there's my little sweetheart. Come and have a drink. No, thanks, Raj. Oh, well, give us a kiss, then. Oh, no, Raj, don't be silly. Let me go now. Yeah, don't tell me you don't love me anymore. Just because that boyfriend of yours has come back. Raj, please. Oh, she's lovely. Oh, come. Raj, please. Uh, Oh, you're lovely when you lose your temper. It will be just about enough of that. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Break it up, you two. Come on, Rudge, get out of here before you get in any more trouble. Johnny, you all right? I'm all right. You better go and cool him off. Quite little Sir Galahad, isn't he? Give me a drink. Are you? Rudge didn't mean anything by it. He had a few drinks and it was his idea of being funny. Well, I wish he'd keep his jokes to himself because I don't find them amusing. But surely you don't think that... Beth, I don't know what to think. Darling, what's going on here? Who are all these men you're so friendly with? Clem and Rudge and that fellow Marco, the one the police are after. What are they doing here? Well, they're just members of the club. We have to talk to them as they spend so much money at the bar. Well, where do they get all that money? I don't know. 
I think they're a bunch of crooks. Oh, now, don't be silly, John. Beth, don't you understand? They may be taking advantage of Mother because she can't tell what kind of people they are. What's going to happen to her if they're turning this club into some sort of headquarters? You're just imagining things. She's blind and she's deaf. She's helpless, isn't she? How can she tell? She's got me. Well, you're so simple that you'd fall for... Well, you fell for me, didn't you? Beth, why don't we get married? I'll take you back to the States. John, I... That'd solve everything, wouldn't it? No, John. There... There's your mother. Well, we can take her with us. She can sell this place. Oh, it'd be wonderful. Right. I'll get a special license tomorrow. No, John, not tomorrow. There are so many things that... Well, that what? Well, that must be settled first. Well, then we'll settle them very quickly. <laughs> as soon as I can. But don't rush me, darling. Why not? We've only got about 50 years. Come on, Charlie. It mustn't break the law, you know. Good night. Good night. Now, this job should be an absolute pushover. So long as everybody does exactly what they're told. The jewels, the diamonds, leave Holland Tuesday night by air. By midday Wednesday, they'll be in Considine's safe. And they'll stay there till Thursday. So for us, it's Wednesday or never. Now, you all know where Considine's place is. So now, here's how we're going to do it. The goods entrance of Considine's is in a little back street here. There you are. Lake Street. And next door to Considine's, there's a building that lets out one-room offices. I've got a room there. And I've got a key to the front door. These offices, do they have a caretaker? No, they're empty all night. Now, Rudge, yeah. you'll wear the chauffeur's uniform because I want you to drop Spike and me off at 11.35 exactly. Uh. Now, Spike, when you get inside the Lake Street building, I want you to go right up to the top. Get out onto the roof and climb across over onto Considine's. Is there a s s sky skylight? Yeah. You'll have to prise that open. Let yourself inside the building, and then work your way all the way down three flights of stairs till you get to ground level. What about the... Considine's watch, wa watchman. You and I will have to take care of him when we get inside. He'll be back in his office at 11.45. What do you mean by taking care of him? Don't worry. He won't get hurt. Now, Spike, when you get inside, I want you to work your way around to the back entrance. Here, now, I've drawn out a plan of the place. Take a good look at it. What about this alarm system? We break the main alarm when we take care of the night watchman. But the two back doors are wired separately. So you'll have to bring some clippers with you and cut the circuit before you open the door to let me in. Now remember this, it's very important. If that alarm goes off, we're sunk. Considine's strong room is down in the basement. Now, the night watchman goes there to punch his time clock at 11.30. And once again at 12.30. Now, Spike lets me in at exactly 11.45. 
and I've allowed five minutes for our chat with the watchman. Then we go down to the basement. Now, the strong room is around the corner at the end of this passage through this grill. It's a chalice safe with an old-fashioned lock, and I've allowed myself six minutes to open it. You're not flattering yourself, are you, Clem? I said I've allowed myself six minutes to open it. We'll have the diamonds at 12 o'clock. Then four minutes to get up the stairs and through the yard into Lake Street. Where do I pick you up? You pick me up here in the corner of Lake Street and Davies Square at five past 12 exactly and be there. I'll be there. What about the police? What have you done about them? Suppose the constable on the beat walks past the back entrance just as Spike is letting you into the building. That is a risk we cannot afford to take. You forgot about the police the last time and look what happened. Rudge can take care of that. Where's Rudge? It's up to you then, Rudge. After you've dropped Spike and Clem to keep the policeman busy and out of the way. Right. Well, that's all. You'd better leave separately. I thought you'd gone to bed long ago. You feeling all right, John? What's the matter? John, please tell me what... Are you the one that hits the watchman on the head, or do you just carry the bag of tools? What do you mean? I mean that for a bunch of crooks, you're not very careful about security, are you? Or do you have to shout because the boss is deaf, is that it? You... You heard? Yes, I heard. John, John, let me explain about, well, about all this. You've got to listen to me. You must. She's your mother. She loves you and I love you. You hate this sort of life. I've always hated it. I pleaded with her to give it all up. And she's promised me that this is going to be the very last time. You've got to believe that, John. I'm getting out. Are you coming with me? I can't. I can't leave her, John. Do you think I wouldn't have gone a long time ago if I could? It takes two of us to make one person. I can't go. Are you coming with me? Oh, John, please don't go. Please, you're all I've got in the world. Beth, why did this have to happen to us? I've tried so hard to put it right. So hard. You've got to let me take you away. You mustn't stay here any longer. Oh, I want to cut, John. I want to, but I can't. I can't. You can and you must. Look, darling, if, if my mother chooses to be mixed up with a bunch of criminals, I can't stop her. But I can do something about you, and I will. Don't say these things, John. You, you know how much it cares for us both. Yeah, I can see that. John, don't say that. It isn't like you. This all started a long time ago. When she bought some rings off Clem to help him out. She found she made a profit on the deal, and since then it's gone on and on. And now it's a nice little crooked business. Well, I don't want any part of it. You've had part of it. A big part of it for a long time. Where do you think the money came from to send you to America? To keep you there for five years? Well, from Van Cleef, of course. You know that. That's what she told you. What she made him let you think. You don't mean she paid. Now you know how she's paid. Well, I'll, I'll go talk to her now. No. No, you mustn't do that. She mustn't know that you know. To kill her. I'll talk to her. All right, Beth, but it's got to stop. Please don't go away. Please don't leave me. Thank you. 
Thank you. Hi, Margie. Hello. Where's Beth? I don't know. I can have room, I think. Have you two had a fight? She's been crying. No, oh, nothing like that. We just had a few words, that's all. Oh, well, give her a kiss and say you're sorry. All right, Margie, as soon as I get back. Would you mind waiting a few minutes, please? Good afternoon. Is Mr. Harvey here? Rudge? No, he's out. What was you wanting? Can I help you? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. I wanted to see him personally. Uh, when do you think he'll be back? Not today. Morning's the best time to catch him. What name shall I say? Oh, uh, Railton. Special license. Now you can be Mrs. John Railton just as soon as you like. Well, you are pleased, aren't you? Yes, of course, John, but... You've I... only got to name the date, Beth. And you can, now that she's finished with Clem Hayes. Well, she has told him, hasn't she? No. Well, why not? Why hasn't she? Well, it wasn't time. Things had gone too far. But you said she was she getting out. She is getting out, John. After this, she's finished. Truly, she is. After? It's always tomorrow, isn't it? But she's not taking any part in this thing. No part at all? No. She has to get rid of the stuff afterwards, but that's all. You mean until they bring the diamonds back here, she isn't really involved, is that right? That's right. What date is this supposed to take place? You don't mean... It's tonight now, isn't it? John, where are you going? What are you going to do? You can't stop it. It's too late. Hey, Clem. Watch your step. I don't like this. You've got cold feet. Turn the heater on. Be there at five past twelve. Having trouble? I can't see a thing. Funny thing, you never seem to break down under a lamppost. Has some light. Oh, thanks, Tom. Just hold it there, will you? That's it. Now, I've got to pick up the customer in 15 minutes.
Carenza. Police. Hello, police. Go to Considine's on Lake Street. The back door is unlocked and there's a dead man next to the safe. Never mind who I am, just get to Considine's. There's been a murder. Everything all right? Yeah. You better come inside, Clem. Hey, Spike. Hey, what's the matter with you? Hey, have a drink. It's all over. Relax. Give me a light. What's worrying you? We're all sitting pretty. How the hell can you be sitting pretty with a murder on your lap? I've never seen you behave like that. What? Clem killed the watchman. Killed the watchman? But when we finished the job, he... He didn't say anything. He got into the car, he did... Made me an accessory. He didn't say a word. 
Well, now you know. He didn't say anything. He, he got into the car and Shut. he said... Shut up. Are you crazy? This is murder. Shut up. Got to get out of here, Spike. Well, we got time. Here they are. There wasn't any trouble? No. Spike didn't slip up anywhere? No. No, Raj? No. Quarter of a million. It's all yours, Clem. What, are you mad? I'm not touching them. I've finished. You can have them all. Well, what is she talking about? She knows I can't get rid of an amount like that. She's the one who's got the contacts, not me. Here. No, Clem, they're yours. I've told you, I've finished. Look, let's not fight about this. We're partners, aren't we? I've done my share. I got the stuff. Now you do yours and get rid of it. No, Clem. We're not partners anymore. I'm buying myself out with my share of the job. But I can't move diamonds. She knows that. Tell her she's got to do it. Clem, I mean it. I'm finished. I'm sorry, but that's the way it's going to be from now on. Good night. Happy now, Beth. Oh, poor old Rummy. No, we haven't forgotten you. Beth, be an angel and take him for a walk. Give him a good run. He hasn't been out all day. Come on, Rummy. Walkies. Come on, boy. Look, come here. Come on, we go walkies. Come on. Come on. There's a good boy. Where are we going to go? Hmm? together, you mean? This is murder, and I don't want to know. Well, you're in it now, whether you like it or not. Not quite. There is a way out, you know. What do you mean? Suppose we go to the police. Not me. You're crazy, Roderick. You'll never get away with it. No, don't worry. I got my story, and I'm sticking to it. This is Clem's party, not mine. And he can pay the bill. You're mad, Rod. You can't do it. We'll see about that. Mad, I tell you. Keep away from me, Spike. Where are you phoning, Rudge? Friends keep pretty late hours, don't they? I was just phoning the garage. You ready to go yet? In a minute. Why don't you relax? Sit down. Have one for the road. You haven't got any friends you want to call up, have you, Spike? I haven't got any friends. Oh, I'm off. Good night. But you had a bit of an accident tonight, Clem. Accident? With a watchman. There was no accident. Is he dead? I'm afraid so. You won't have to worry about that, though, will you, Rudge? You won't have to phone the police to take care of you. I want to do that myself. Oh, well. If he's dead, he's dead. Can't be out. And he, when we was in the car, he, he didn't tell me. I was a bit annoyed. Hey. 
Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown. Please. Yeah, good boy, Ramin, go to sleep. What are you doing out here? I've just come back with the dog. Everybody seems to have gone. Have they been back then? Yes. John, your mother's had it out with Clayman. She's told him she's finished. Isn't it wonderful? Darling, don't you know? What's that car doing there? Well, it's Rudge's. Must have left it here. He does sometimes. Well, that isn't the car they used. Yes. I can't understand why he's left it. Beth, go inside. But, John, I can't... Just go in and go to bed. I'm going to take that car back to Rudge's garage. It's not going to stand here all night. At least from less of a motor mechanic, he might have saved that man's life. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. What do you know about this car you've been telling me about? Well, it was a Daimler Saloon, EL24 model, and a six-cylinder... The number, you engine. damn fool, the number! Oh, a JBC427, sir. Check on it, Brooks. Could have been the getaway car. Find out what it was doing tonight. All right, sir.
What time is this? About half past one in the morning, I should say. I live up there, you see, sir. And when the car came in, I looked out of the window, expecting to see Rudge. Wasn't him. It was this chap I'm telling you about. What did he do? Well, he left the car where it is now, went off. Did he go to the back seat? Back? No. No, sir, no. He just took round the yard for a minute and then went off. I didn't think no more about it. But when I came down at seven o'clock this morning, I wondered where Rudge had been. When I opened the door, there he was, all twisted up. I didn't touch nothing. Anything on the wheel? Yes, sir. Some very good impression, sir. Good. How about the back door? Not yet, sir. The prints are all very confused. Oh, keep trying. Well, what did this man look like? Didn't take all that notice, sir. But I can tell you who he is. You can? Yes, sir. He's been here before. Yesterday afternoon it was. Asked him for Rudge. Said his name was Brailton. What? Brailton? All right. Thanks, sir. Now, what possible motive could he have? I don't know, sir, but there's no love lost between those two, you know. Remember that scrap they had? Yes, but that's no motive for murder. Better get back to the station right away, Brooks. Get Relton in on some excuse. Keep him there till I get back. Right, sir. Um, get his fingerprints. Let us know. Give him a coffee or something. Make sure he gets hold of the cup. Right, sir. And don't tell him anything. I'll get back as soon as I can. Very good, sir. Didn't Clem say anything about it? Did you know about this, Beth? This is terrible. What's Clem up to? Why didn't he tell me? What game's he playing? Get Spike round here. I want to know what happened last night. The whole story. Spike, why didn't you tell me when you got back? That's what I can't understand. Why didn't you tell me? Didn't Clem tell her? Rudge was going to... Clem allowed me to think that everything was... What were you going to say, Spike? Rudge was going to squeal. He was scared stiff. He was going to turn copper on us. What happened? Clem came, came into the bar and Rudge pulled himself together. Did Clem know about this? I don't know. They were having a drink when I, when I left. You can't trust Rudge. What happens when he reads the papers? Spike, you must get away. Go somewhere, anywhere. Get away, quick. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Marguerite, have you heard? Yes. You mustn't be around when they start asking questions. Have you got any money? Here's a hundred pounds. Now, do as I say. I want you to go down to Mrs. Stewart's in Dorset and stay there. No! I'm not going to leave her. Tell her I'm I sorry to... about this, Marguerite, but you'll be all right when you get away. But what about her? What's going to happen to her? I'll be here, Marguerite. Don't worry. You better go. <sighs> Take care of her, Beth. Good morning. Good morning. Um, won't you come in? Thank you. I'd just like to ask you a few questions. Oh, well, 
Perhaps I'd better get Mrs. Ralph in. No, I don't think we need bother her yet. Oh. Was Rudge Harvey here last night? No. No, he wasn't. Did you hire one of his cars yesterday? No. Did Mr. Elton? No, he didn't. How do you know? Well, he, he would have told us. He always tells you what he does? Yes, he does, usually. And he didn't say anything yesterday about hiring one of Harvey's cars? No, we have our own car here in the garage. Was it out last night? No, we didn't go out. Why are you asking all these questions? If Mr. Railton had wanted to use a car yesterday, he could have used the one that was in the garage here. He'd have had no need to go to Harvey's. No, of course not. Mr. Railton was here last night. Yes. Yes, he was. He went out, didn't he? Now, we know he went out. What time was that? I don't know. Did he go to meet Rudge Harvey? No. No, he didn't. I'm sure he didn't. Why are you so sure? He doesn't like Rudge very much. I see. Look, I think I ought to tell you that Harvey was murdered last night. His body was found this morning in the back of his car. We're holding John Railton for questioning about it. I'm sorry. and then killed him. He shan't get away with it. I'll tell. I'll tell everything. Oh, if only you could hear. Oh, Beth, this is all my fault. Try and forgive me if you can. I ought to have listened to you long ago. Yes, I know. And between us, we've got to save him. I want Clem Hayes to come round here. He'll come. Tell him. If he wants those diamonds, he's to come and collect them here in half an hour's time. Say, if he isn't here by then, I'm going to send them back to Considines anonymously. He'll come. Ring him. No. He's probably hiding at his sister's place. No. You know the number. No. Go on. Tell him I want him here in half an hour. <laughs> What about Railton's statement, sir? Do you think it's the truth? Should we pick up Hayes and Spike O'Connell for the Considine job? Yes. Better pull them in. What about Mrs. Railton, sir? Well, she could be in it, one way or another, but I hope not. Anyway, she can't go far. And John Railton? You gonna charge him with the Harvey murder? Not yet, Brooks. I still can't believe that he did it. The story sounds too thin not to be true. It's all down there. Good. What time is it? Right, give it to me. He ought to be here any moment now. I want you to go and wait for him outside. When he comes, bring him straight in here. Don't tell him anything. And don't let him go. You keep one of these. Keep it carefully. Close the door after you.
Tell Inspector Harris that Clem Hayes is at the 99 Club. Tell Inspector Harris that Clem Hayes is at the 99 Club. Tell Inspector Harris that Clem Hayes is at the 99 Club. Tell Inspector Harris that Clem Hayes is at the 99 Club. Clem, I want to talk to you. Sit down. You needn't wait, Beth. I want to talk to Clem privately. Yes, I know he won't be able to answer me, but I shall manage. I'll call you if I want to. And only come if I call. responsible for two deliberate murders. Two deaths that need never have happened. And you fix the second so that somebody else should take the blame. That somebody turns out to be my son. My son, Ken. The only person apart from Beth I care about in the whole world. Do you think I'm going to let that boy pay your debts? What do you take me for? You're going to see that he doesn't. That's why you're here. Written down there is a confession to both killings. Sign it, and I'll let you get away before I give it to the police. Sign it while my hand holds yours, or I'll tell Beth to let the police know everything now. Make your choice. And don't get any ideas about killing me first. Beth knows everything. It's all written down where you can't find it. Are you going to sign, Clem? You haven't much time. Quickly, will you? 
Get this door open. Break it down somehow. Oh, no. Going to be you. All right. Tell her. It's going to be all right. 